So have you heard you're not going to have a job in six months? Let me tell you why that's wrong for most people, but what you can do to stay ahead of the curve. My name is Jose. Here at Teclado, I build websites and I teach coding at all skill levels. I've used ChatGPT a lot and I can tell you it's not going to take our jobs anytime soon, at least not in their entirety. In this video, let me tell you why and also at the end of it, I'll show you my top tips for prompting and interacting with ChatGPT in a way that will make you a more productive programmer. Let's get started. The first reason why ChatGPT is not going to take our jobs in their entirety is because ChatGPT makes a lot of mistakes. You need to know how to code yourself before you can really use ChatGPT well to create code. And I think that is because ChatGPT can generate code that it has seen verbatim in its training data and it can just give you code that it has seen before. But once you start asking it to generate something new, it will do a few things wrong. Something I've seen very often is it will generate a medley of bits of code it has seen before. For example, it'll start giving you some code and it will use a variable. It will generate a variable name that it has seen in one bit of code, but that variable name may have also been seen in a different bit of code and it will just get confused between the two bits and it will suddenly use the variable in a way that cannot be used or that is incompatible between the two different codes it has seen. This kind of mistake I found very often when using ChatGPT and it just doesn't make sense. But if you don't know how to code yourself, you can go down a rabbit hole where it's very difficult to fix some of these mistakes. I think over time, ChatGPT is going to get better at detecting its mistakes, and we already see that with the code interpreter. So this may become a bit less of a problem in the future, but I still think that due to the architecture of ChatGPT and the way it's designed and the way it works, it's not going to be possible for it to be 100% accurate all the time, especially as it gets better. When it does make a mistake, it's going to be more difficult to detect. So without knowing to code yourself, I think it's going to be difficult to get replaced by ChatGPT. With that said, if you do know how to code, you can use these AI tools like ChatGPT to increase your productivity massively. And this is where our jobs may be at a slight jeopardy. For example, let's say a business hires three engineers and they just need one now with ChatGPT. They could just do more stuff with those three engineers and gain a bigger profit or a bigger market share, etc. So I would say ChatGPT is not going to replace all of us, but it is going to make us more productive. And depending on the business and what they want to do and their ambition, maybe some jobs will need to be cut. And I think this will especially be true if you are the type of engineer that requires a task to be given to you, broken down into bits that you can just implement. The more that your daily job resembles a ChatGPT prompt, the more replaceable you're going to be. So I would suggest getting in on the product development side of things, understanding the users, making meaningful suggestions to product development and be a part of the team and not just a separate development resource that the rest of the business Business comes to to implement their ideas. I strongly believe that software engineers are going to become higher and higher level, more like product managers in a way, maybe at a slightly lower level than what a product manager does currently, but certainly at a higher level than the way a lot of coding is done today. I don't think software developers are going to be worrying so much about the minutiae of the job, like writing a function to do X or writing a class to do Y. ChatGPT is already quite good at that if you can break down the instructions well, so maybe we won't be doing that kind of thing in the future. I was actually a little bit more worried about my teaching job because you can use ChatGPT to learn to code, but it's just like a writing code. You need somebody that knows what they're doing to give you some guidance. And if not, as soon as ChatGPT makes a mistake, you're not going to know if it has made a mistake or not because you, you're still learning. And also ChatGPT may introduce concepts uh, in a weird order. And finally, ChatGPT may recommend or may give you things to learn that are just outdated or no longer relevant, or maybe there are better ways to do things. And it can't very well gauge which things are better than others in terms of what you should learn or shouldn't learn, and what's been left behind and what's up and coming in the development world. So I think using ChatGPT to learn is helpful, but I wouldn't use it as my sole resource. Obviously, I'm a bit biased since I teach to code, but that's what I think. So ChatGPT is super useful. Let me show you how I've been using it and then maybe you can get a bit more productive with it. The first thing that I've used ChatGPT a lot for is to improve my productivity in small day-to-day -day tasks. There's always been a balance to be struck in the last 10 years or 20 years between how long a task 
takes to do yourself by hand and how long it would take you to write some code to perform the same task. And the software developers, we've always biased to uh, writing the code, even if that takes a lot longer than just doing the thing that we wanted to do in the first place. But ChatGPT has tilted these scales massively. Now, instead of just doing something manually once, you can ask ChatGPT for some code to do that thing and it will save you time. So you don't even need to do things manually in the first place. Recently, I was publishing some new lectures in one of my courses and I just wanted to make sure that none of my lectures in my content management system had the same slug. That's the address that you access them in in the browser. If two lectures have the same slug, you can't access one of them. And so I just wanted to make sure there are no duplicate slugs. I could have gone through the 70 or 80 lectures and just made sure that there were no duplicates or I could have exported it into Excel and just did a unique formula or I can just export the whole thing as JSON, give it to ChatGPT and ask it to find duplicates. I use the ChatGPT code interpreter for this and it wrote some code that checks duplicates. So then what I did is I copied that code and I saved it into a script. So the next time I'm doing the same job, I can just reuse that code. And so this saved me a lot of time and it's something I've been doing a lot. Whenever I have something small, small task to do and that I just don't want to do manually, you can ask ChatGPT for it and it greatly improves your productivity. And there is no task too small for ChatGPT, which is part of the benefit. You can just ask it to do everything and it oftentimes will be able to succeed at the task and you don't have to do it yourself. Especially now that you can upload files to ChatGPT, just upload a file of data and ask it some questions on it. With the code interpreter extension, it will write some code to solve the problem that you can then save. And if you don't have the code interpreter extension enabled yet, you can just ask it to write some Python code to solve the problem and you can then save that into a script for use later. As another example, I was trying to copy some content from one of the folders in my desktop to my content management system. And I wrote some code to do this a while back, but it was super messy because it was something that I just had to do quickly. So I gave the whole code to ChatGPT and I asked it to improve it. And great, it understands the code. You can improve it. You can ask it to explain the improvements step by step. And you can also ask it to write function comments, doc strings with type hinting and all that kind of thing. And so that's really great for improving the code slightly, but you can actually take it a step further. And this is something that I did as well. You can get the improved code and then ask it to re-implement the interface using something like TKinter or Qt or even as a website. And once ChatGPT understands what you want to do, what the inputs and outputs are of your code and what the different bits of user interface are, it's really good at creating a different interface that fulfills the same criteria. It's as usual with these AI tools. If the task is broken down and it's easily understood, it's very good at interacting with it and, and kind of getting something out of it. And you can take the learning further. For example, if you have a Flask app that uses SQL Alchemy, you can ask it to re-implement it with SQL model. And I've tried this as well, and it's very good at that as well. So some prompting tips. Assume ChatGPT is like a junior developer. You want to give it clear, specific tasks with specific success criteria. And if possible, you don't want to give ChatGPT the whole task and problem description in one prompt. Build it up over a few messages. For example, something I've done very often is give it some code and ask it to explain it. That way you can check that it understands what's going on correctly. Then you can ask it to improve it or maybe change a specific function to do something else. Or maybe instead of taking some specific inputs, you want to take some other inputs and process the data differently. Doing this step by step, I found gives me much better results. So imagine it's a junior developer and you have to give it broken down tasks. This also helps with the main problem with ChatGPT, which I mentioned earlier, which is that it makes mistakes. So by doing things incrementally, you're going to spot mistakes faster because you're going to be running the code that it gives you each time that it gives you some code and make sure that it works. And obviously this is true for all of software development. You always want to be doing incremental development, but with ChatGPT, it's much faster to do things step by step in small increments and you can check the code each time. So what do you think? Have you been using ChatGPT or other AI tools to help you be more productive? Are you worried it might take your job or are you feeling empowered to do more and be more productive? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. I'll see you next time.